Teresa Jung. Uh, I'm Marie Jeans. Well, actually, we're all family now. No one really calls her Marie. His real name is Jean. <laughs> I'm her cousin, Ethan's personal babysitter. <laughs> Jean's personal driver. Her wedding planner, apparently. <laughs> and her sound board. Now, when Marie and Steve first got engaged, uh, you know, Jean asked me to be her maid of honor. And she said she was really dreading this part of the night. Jean, I, I really can't understand why. <laughs> Now, I've known Marie for about 20 years now. I mean, she's my cousin, uh, but we've really become closer over the last you know, eight years um, after the birth of her, her first son, Ethan. Uh, a few things to know about Sean. Number one, she's an incredible mother. Uh, Ethan has not want for anything. Ethan is the first thing that's on her mind when she wakes up in the day, and he's the last thing on her mind before she goes to bed. She's there for homework. She's there on the first day of school, leering through windows. <laughs> yes, she's that parent. <laughs> uh, but Ethan couldn't ask for a better person as a mother. She's a wonderful human uh, and a most, <laughs> uh, a most caring friend. Uh, now my cousin John is also very hardworking. Uh, she owns her own business and she has for many years now. And I think a testament uh, to a, what a great person that she is, is that many of the guests here tonight are not only her friends, but her former clients who've now become extended family. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jean will persevere at anything. Um, whatever she sets her mind to, Jean will get there. Uh, Jean's a recent US citizen. <laughs> While studying for a test, I've never seen someone work so hard every single day on her phone, not on Facebook, she was actually studying this time. <laughs> she went and on Amazon and she got many study materials and she started watching many news outlets to see what the news of, uh, what the, news of the day was. Um, thankfully, uh, this past spring, she became a US citizen uh, and I think with all the effort that she put into it, she actually probably knows more about, you know, politics than some of our politicians today. <laughs> <laughs> um, and John is loving. Uh, me and John are very close. Uh, Ethan, John, and I are like, we were kind of like, before, you know, Steve came in the picture, the three musketeers. <laughs> we would take vacations together. We've been to Florida, Disney World many, many, many road trips together. And I have to say, at first, you know, when Steve came into a picture, I was a little miffed because I kind of felt left out. Uh, but we're getting to that part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, Jean, <laughs> remember that part I said about how she was dreading yeah. me giving the speech? I remember why. <laughs> now, a couple of years ago, I noticed that John, although you know a great mother, she needed <laughs> you know some adult conversation. So I encouraged her to go online and you know try to meet you know some friends. Uh, maybe it would spark a relationship. Uh, and you know she was online for a couple of sites. Even got banned on a few. <laughs> That's a different story entirely. Uh, <laughs> And after a while, she was telling me about this guy that she really liked. And I thought it was really odd for John to come from talking to this guy and soon it progressed to texting. And you know, a couple weeks later, she's like, you know, Teresa, I'm ready for the next step. What's that, John? They're going to be IRL. Now, for those who don't know, that's in real life. <laughs> and that's a big deal. So John, and although I did not know Steve at the time, set up a date. And me being Steve's personal babysitter was babies. <laughs> what? Oh, Ethan, me being, sorry, Ethan's personal babysitter. Uh, I was babysitting Ethan. <laughs> so I, you know, gave John the rundown don't get into his car. You know, don't let him know where you live. You know, make sure you have your phone at all times. Because after watching many hours, many, many, many hours of SVU, <laughs> 
I didn't want Jean's organs to be shipped to Columbia or something. <laughs> so Jean got all dolled up for her date, and she was really excited. Three hours went by, and I hadn't heard anything, so I figured the date's going pretty well. After four and a half hours, I was like, oh, well, maybe I should call her. So I did, and she didn't pick up. Five hours went by, and I really started to panic a little bit. I went running around in Manchester, in Jean's car, trying to find her. Where had she gone? I'm at the restaurant. What am I going to do? After five and a half hours of not hearing from her, I decided it was time to file a report. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Not with the police. It was Joseph Jean. <laughs> I called him, crying, frantic, saying, Daddy, Jean has been date lying. I can't find her. After two minutes of talking to me and trying to calm me down, <laughs> my father was able to contact Sean. Oops, <laughs> he went to the movies. Uh, I thought it was on my break. My bad. <laughs> uh, so thankfully, Sean did not uh, become an organ donor <laughs> that night. So at first, Steve, my first impression of you was not great. <laughs> but I must say, at least now I don't think you're a kidnapper, body snatcher, or murderer. So I think that's a major improvement, right? <laughs> there are also two other things that kind of made me really question Steve. Number one, at the time he was driving a Nissan Juke. Have you guys seen that car? <laughs> I mean, seriously, have you seen it? <laughs> and number two, he really must be a gun for punishment. He's a die-hard Eagles fan. <laughs> but over time, I came to know him. I remember the first Thanksgiving we spent with each other. I was probably more nervous than John was because I know how crazy our family can be to the outside. But Steve sat there through Alphonse and Daddy arguing about politics and who's right. <laughs> he sat there through my mother speaking French to him the whole time. And by the way, Steve doesn't speak French at all. <laughs> and over the time, I've you know been witness, first-hand witness to seeing their their relationship grow. Ethan has been a wonderful and excellent role model to you know our Ethan, and I can definitely. Steve, sorry, so sorry, sorry. Can you tell I'm a little nervous? Steve has been a wonderful role model to our Ethan, amazing father figure. Um, you know, it's not a group of three anymore, but I couldn't ask for a better person, you know, to take my place. Steve, thank you for loving her like we love her. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for being who you are to Ethan. One last thing. Steve, I don't know if you realize it now, but you're now African. <laughs> There's a couple of things you gotta know. Number one, Nigerian jollof is better than Ghanaian jollof. You should know. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Number two, and probably the most important thing, you now have the best excuse for being late to anything. <laughs> are notoriously late. Two hours, three hours, that doesn't mean anything. Tonight, the wedding was supposed to start at four. I'm sure you saw some of us popping in at seven. <laughs> but on a serious note, guys, uh, you guys couldn't pick a really perfect, more perfect song. Your relationship, your love is really perfect. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak today. <laughs> I wasn't that bad, you didn't have to worry. <laughs> I love you guys very, very much. I wish you so, so much happiness, blessings. But can I please have another nephew though? Thanks. <laughs>